Let's make some mole today, just like my abuelos. Okay, so today I'm cooking like abuelo. This is pretty similar to my grandfather's mother, my great-grandmother. She would make mole poblano. And the only variation I'm doing is probably the ratios because there really was not a recipe or quantities that they could tell you how to use. Everyone had different taste, whether they wanted it spicy, sweeter, saltier. You know how that goes. Now, the difference in what I'm making today and what my grandfather uh, uses as far as the dried chilies, I like to add chile morita. I like a little bit of that smoky flavor to the chilies, but typically or traditionally, it's chile pasilla, which is the po dried poblano peppers, and chile mulato. But I will put all of the ratios or ingredient list below this video so you can check out the quantities. But here I have my dried chilies and I'm going to remove the stems and seeds, give them a rinse. I will eventually toast them. I'm going to be using a half cup of raisins. Here I have 10 Maria cookies. You could use animal crackers as well. I have three whole cloves, one small stick of cinnamon. I'll be adding half of a small onion that I sliced, three cloves of garlic, teaspoon of anise seed or anise seeds, one tablet of Mexican chocolate. Here I have one small pan bolillo. It's just that Mexican style French bread roll that I cut into slices. If you have a large pan bolillo, maybe half of that works for this. Now I am a nut-free house, so I'm using half a cup of pepitas, which is hulled pumpkin seeds, and half a cup of sesame seeds or ancojoli. Here I have one ripe plantain that I'll be slicing up. And I'm just going to start prepping the ingredients. I'm also going to season with salt, some chicken bouillon powder, and it's just, it's going to be great. So let's get started. So once you start to smell whatever it is that you're toasting, it becomes kind of fragrant and aromatic. That's a good time to remove it from the heat. I am using a low heat because you don't want to burn anything. Okay, now for those sesame seeds and these will go quick. So just low heat and constantly stir. Okay, so now for the next part, I'm going to actually start frying some of the ingredients. So I'm gonna crank up the heat just a little bit. I had it on a low heat. Let's put it on a medium heat. And I'm gonna start by frying the bread pieces. Everything is toasted and fried over here. And the garlic I left the skin on so it didn't burn when I sauteed it in the oil, but I'm gonna remove the skin before I puree everything. But already everything just smells so wonderful in my kitchen. So for this recipe, you're going to need at least somewhere between nine 
to 10 cups of chicken broth. I'm gonna make my own because I'm gonna boil some chicken. Here I have a pot, this is around five liters of water. I'm gonna add three and a half pounds of chicken and I'm going to add some garlic cloves, a small piece of onion. I'm gonna bring it up to boil. Once it starts to get that foamy stuff on top, I'm gonna to skim that off. Then I'm going to add three tablespoons of chicken bouillon powder into the water, give it a mix and let it cook for another 45 to 50 minutes until everything is done. So I have all of my dried chiles peeled or the seeds removed and the stems removed. So I'm going to add them to a large bowl. Rinse well because they do come with debris. So I'm gonna rinse them well. Okay, so these are rinsed well, and also rinsing helps to remove any of those seeds that are stuck on the inside of the uh, chiles. I know some of the pasilla chiles, it still kind of has that sticky, gooey texture, so the seeds stick to it. Now, if you want seeds in it, that works, but it'll definitely make it spicier. So I'm going to place these on a baking sheet and spread them out, and these are going in, these are going to go in a 450 degree oven and I'm just gonna let them toast. Now, I don't wanna burn them, so I'm gonna watch them carefully. I'm gonna spread them out, and what I'll do is let them go for about five to seven minutes, give them all a flip, put them back in another five minutes or until they are toasty. Okay. So it's, ooh, smoky. So I'm gonna give these a flip carefully. Okay, still going in. So I am going to actually soak my toasted chilies in the broth. So I'm just gonna ladle out some broth and I'm gonna submerge the chilies and let them soak to get soft and pliable before I puree them. And I will be using the broth, uh, the soaking liquid into the mole sauce eventually. It's just gonna be extra layers of flavor. Okay, so here are my toasted, roasted chilies. I'm gonna add them right into this bowl, carefully, because they still are kind of hot. I'm gonna add my hot broth right on top. And just let these soak and submerge in this broth. It's gonna take about 20 minutes for these to soak properly. And by the way, instead of foil, I'm using the lid from the pot that I was boiling my chicken in. The chicken's done, by the way. It's right over here. And I'm just gonna keep it covered and let that hang out as well. Here I put my tablet of Mexican chocolate with a towel over it and I'm just gonna break it apart. Okay, so these have been soaking for about 25 minutes. So I'm gonna start to puree everything. I'm gonna start obviously here with my chilies. I'm gonna carefully put them into my blender cup. Here we go. Now I'm going to add in one cup of that soaking liquid. It's the chicken broth and the chili combination that it's soaked in but I'm gonna to start to puree this. So I'm gonna add some more. It looks like it's gonna take at least two cups of this liquid to get things going. It's a lot of chilies to puree, so I get it. And there's some more in there. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Super thick puree. Maybe I should do this in batches. I'm gonna add one cup of the chicken broth.
I need to add more liquid to this. So I'm going in with another cup already. That's two cups of broth. I'm going in with the second part of this. And for the chocolate, I've crushed it. Add one cup of broth again and puree well. Okay, so here's all of my pureed chilies with that broth, the soaking liquid broth. And here is the rest of my ingredients that I added chicken broth to and pureed well. And I added a little more chicken broth and just got anything that was left behind in the blender. Any residual sauce that was there, I blended it with around two cups of the broth. So I'm ready to put this in a pot and simmer. Now I'm going to add my mole, or the puree, the chili puree. Now for the rest of the puree ingredients going in. I'm gonna give that a mix. gosh it smells amazing I'm going to it's really thick so I want to thin it out a little bit with that extra broth from the blender I'm gonna add some salt to taste just maybe give it a mix and just continue to stir combine and simmer so I want to go over when you adjust things to your preference in this sauce you're either going to want to add more salt or you're gonna to wanna to make it sweeter. It really is your preference. These are things that are personal to you. So for example, typically my grandfather, if he wants it sweeter, he'll use piloncillo. This is a uh, cane sugar that's like really hard. You have to kind of shave it or chop it up. Now, if you don't have piloncillo, dark brown sugar works. Now, if you want things saltier, you feel like it needs to be have a little more salt, you know, add salt. Or some people really like to use the chicken bouillon powder. I added the bouillon powder to my broth, so if I need things to be saltier, I'm probably just going to add salt. But again, it is up to you. Okay, so I've already added a quarter cup of dark brown sugar, and I'm going to add a half tablet of the Mexican chocolate. Um, and like I said... I thought it needed more of the chocolate and sugar. You guys might think it's okay, so the taste is up to you. But I'm just gonna continue stirring and simmering this for 30 minutes, and then it'll be ready to serve. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.